Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm taking a look at Strife, which finally got his upgrade. He got a new uniform and his T3, and if you've been playing PvP in the last week or so, you'll know just how good he is. He is basically meta, which is kind of surprising considering that T4 characters just dominate the game for the most part, but outside of timeline, he is meta in things like Other World Battle and Alliance Conquest. This is mostly due to the fact that he has that debuff effect, not on his leadership, but as a passive ability, meaning that you could utilize it in Other World Battle and it kind of opens up the team building so that you can use any kind of leadership that you want and aren't restricted to debuff leaderships. Surprisingly enough, the character isn't just good for PvP, but he's actually really strong in PvE as well. In fact, he ended up performing better than Kang from the testing that I did, and that is kind of another reason why Kang should be buffed. The only reason I can see that they don't do that is that maybe he gets a uniform very soon that kind of makes up for that. He could potentially get a T4 as well, but I don't really see that happening for a native character since they haven't really touched the earlier native T3 characters like Sentry, Null, and Mephisto for so long. You can get an idea of just how good Strife is in PvE from this first clip that I tested in Stage 9 of Null. I took him in with no leadership or support and no damage proc, and he was able to complete the entire stage in 70 seconds. Because the character did so well in the initial test on Stage 9, I decided to go up to Stage 39 again without a leadership and support, and surprisingly enough, he was able to complete this with almost 50 seconds remaining. The reason I found this clear time so interesting is because I also tested on the same stage with Kang and his leadership and two supports and no damage proc, and he was only able to clear that about 10 seconds faster, which just shows you how much stronger Strife is for PvE content. And if that wasn't enough to convince you, I also took him into a stage 54, again with no damage proc, but this time using a leadership and support, and he was able to complete this with about 30 seconds remaining. I think that's really impressive for a character that's just level 70, not even level 80, and is primarily geared for PvP. I wouldn't advise building him for PvE, but if you just don't care about PvP in general and you wanted to have fun with the character in PvE, then a CTP of Rage would probably be the easiest to use, but he is really proc friendly and a CTP of Energy, possibly even a CTP of Destruction if you wanted to do that also works. You likely won't use the character in ABX or ABL just because there are far better options, but if you did want to use him there, he has pretty much all of the cancel effects for the different seasons with the exclusion of burn, and with no damage proc I was able to score around close to 9.4 million, so if you did have a damage proc, possibly something like a rage, I think you can hit somewhere around 10 or 11 million pretty easily. Maybe when the character gets a level 80 and possibly a T4 in the next decade, then he could potentially be meta in the Blast Villain Day. The character can also solo Giant Boss Raid Dormammu. I was able to clear the first phase well within 60 seconds, meaning that he can do this by himself. The rotation that I used was to cancel the first and second skill to fill up his ult faster, and then I would just do a 3, cancel 4, cancel 5. You essentially want to always finish on the fifth skill because it has a single skill damage proc. When you do the rotations again, you should be able to fill up your ultimate before going into your 5th skill, so just make sure to cancel the 6th skill before you go into your 5th skill at the very end. With PvE aside, PvP is where the character's true value lies. They pretty much gave him everything that he needs to be a good standalone character, where the meta is pretty much dominated by revive or immortal characters. The effects that I'm talking about here are a high amount of damage reduction, a very powerful iframe ignore skill, his third skill not only heals him constantly when he activates it, but also has super guard break to lock down the opponent, and has damage accumulation for damage done, which means that it will essentially one-shot the opponent when it's activated. On top of this, the character has an 80% chance to penetrate all sources on his passive, and also has super armor to protect against super guard break, so he doesn't really get head rocked. 
The fifth skill also has Invincible on it, which further helps against that, and also has a 100% damage increase for that skill to help with his burst potential. Besides this, the character also has a bunch of partial and full iframes to help his survival, as well as an artifact that increases his passive healing to help with that even more. One thing that's frequently overlooked is that he has a bunch of incapacitation that removes the opponent's buffs, and has Fracture, which is a mechanic that isn't often seen, which reduces healing and damage dealt, and can't be debuffed. It can only be removed as the character heals, and that only removes stacks of it since Fracture stacks up. And last but not least, he has that debuff effect passively, which means that you don't have to use a debuff leadership to make him work, and you can make him even stronger by using a leadership that helps versus the team you're facing. You could run something like a Colossus leadership that not only improves his damage reduction further, but also gives him some physical damage immunity. His AI rotation is quite good as well. He usually opens with the third skill that often one-shots the opponent, and he gains a massive damage increase. From there, he usually goes into the fifth skill, which provides him with that invincible, as well as another 100% attack increase for the skill, and then often goes into the fourth skill, which increases his attack even more and he stays in iframe. In terms of his build options, I would recommend building him more defensively since his offensive capabilities are already pretty strong as is. So for that, I would suggest something like a Mighty Authority so you can get as close to the max damage reduction amount as you can. If you have a Brilliant Authority, I think that would be the most ideal. However, if you have his artifact, it is worth trying out something like a Mighty Conquest because you have that additional healing layer as well as the heals that he spams from his third skill. I don't really think you can go wrong with either of these CTPs, and in fact, I actually tested both in these timeline clips and switched between the Mighty Authority and the Mighty Conquest, and both perform pretty similarly. If you do use a Conquest CTP though, I would recommend using a support character too, since that greatly improves that CTP's performance. If you want more info about that, then make sure to check out the Conquest CTP breakdown that I made before this. I don't recommend using the character in Timeline, even though he's strong, there are better options for your three-man team there. However, I did take him into a manual fight. One of the things that I did was to use the fifth skill first when fighting Gene, gives you the invincible and a bit of iframe, and then immediately go into your third skill. You do this for both of our lives, and you should be able to take her out pretty easily. From there, it's basically just spamming whatever's available to you and using the third skill every time it's off cooldown to get that healing back and one-shot the opponent. Wolverine is really the biggest problem that you're going to face because you can't really kill him before he does the same to you. I also did some additional testing with Strife and that mighty CTP of Conquest in Alliance Conquest, and you can see that he can basically just solo the opponents for the most part. The third skill allows him to one-shot opponents pretty easily, so you're not often facing off versus three opponents for that wall effect to get reduced down very quickly. And from there, once the clash effect or the top rock activates, you can just basically one-shot the opponents right after. Probably one of the top characters to pair with Strife is something like Colossus Leadership, since it provides him with the physical damage immunity, so speed types can't instantly counter him, and he also gets that increased damage reduction, which pairs really well with his high damage reduction, and his constant healing and active healing from the third skill. Countering Strife isn't too big of a deal, since he is a blast type, he can be countered by speed types, that have a type advantage and kind of offset the huge amount of damage reduction he has passively and with supports. So that would be characters like Spider-Man or Spider-Gwen. Besides this, the character is also pretty susceptible to reflect damage. So you could use things like Destroyer, Ancient One, Emma, or even Silver Surfer to take him out. Overall, I think this is a great upgrade for the character and is long overdue. I think the devs made the right choice in giving him a ton of meta effects for PvP and giving them high values for those, such as the penetration being 80%, the damage accumulation being really high for damage dealt, because that's really what a character needs if they are only going to have one life. They need to be very difficult to take down and very strong offensively to make the most use out of it. Again, 
in a meta that is dominated by revive and immortality characters that have two chances at that. I decided not to show any footage of him in Otherworld Battle since it's a little tough to show his performance specifically in that mode when there's so much other things going on, but take my word for it, you absolutely want to get his upgrade and the character built up for it if you want to have an easy time staying in the higher ranks. He is a direct replacement for Wasp, and pretty much every team needs a debuff passive in that mode. If you put him in the last spot of that team, oftentimes he will also end up saving you since he will just immediately burst down whoever is active on the opponent's side and will survive long enough to potentially use the third skill again and possibly one shot whoever's left. That does it for this one. The next one that I'll be looking at is Cable since it took forever to get his potential. I'll show what he can do in PvE as well as what kind of usability he has in PvP. And from there, if I have enough time, I'll try to take a look at Omega Red and Domino before the Black Panther T4 patch drops. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please consider liking and possibly sharing it with others, maybe even subscribing. I always appreciate people taking the time to watch these, so thank you. But the video is now over.